Is there a simple formula that you can use to price all of your artwork? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find watercolour tips and techniques as well as painting and drawing generally, business, social media and online selling for artists. So please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So there's one question that's asked again and again on art forums and on Facebook groups and that is how do I price my artwork? So it's usually asked by people that are quite new to the business and perhaps just starting to sell their work. Perhaps you yourself have considered, you know, how on earth do I price a painting? How on earth do I tell somebody what something is worth? It's really, really difficult, isn't it? Now, when people ask this, this question on groups, what happens is somebody always comes on and says, don't worry, don't worry, I've got you sorted. There's this simple formula all you do is, you know, you multiply the height by the width of the painting, you know, incorporate the time that you spent on it, price per square inch, um, what the materials are worth, times it by the, uh, the birth date of your firstborn child, position of the moon, all sorted. Joking, obviously, but there's, you know, there's always someone that comes on and says there is this simple formula and this is how you do it. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go through the three most commonly used formulas. Now, I should tell you at this point that I am not a fan of pricing formulas. Generally, uh, when it comes to pricing artwork, you can't just use a simple formula. You know, it would be lovely, wouldn't it, if it was that easy, but um, it's not really. Now, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you the two, the only two things that actually uh, decide the price of your artwork. But before that, we're gonna go through these three most commonly used pricing formulas because I'm not somebody that believes in absolutes. I'm not gonna say, well, there's no pricing formula that ever works for anybody. And you may find that one of these pricing formulas does work for you, at least for a limited amount of time. But what I should tell you is that eventually they're gonna fall down. Eventually you're gonna find you have to move away from pricing formulas. So by all means, incorporate one of these if it helps you, particularly when you're on the very first steps towards pricing your artwork and just have no idea what to do. So have a look at each of these that I'm gonna talk about. I'll tell you the, uh, the plus points and the fit pitfalls, fit pause? pitfalls and uh, you can decide for yourself if any of them will help you. And the first pricing formula I have for you is to price by your time. So this one seems quite logical, doesn't it? Because if you were an accountant or a dentist, you would certainly be paid by the hour, or at least you would be pricing yourself if you're working independently, uh, self-employed, you'd be pricing by the hour. So this seems like a logical thing to do. And actually I tried to do this myself for quite a while. But what I found eventually was that uh, sometimes I would spend, and you must have done this, you must have spent hours working on something only to be completely disappointed by it and think, well, actually, I've put in 20, 30 hours of work on this piece of art, but I'm not really that happy. I'm not sure that it could sell for a very high price. It might be saleable, but it's not one of my best pieces. Now, the other thing that happens, of course, is that sometimes you just do a piece of work really, really fast and uh, you think, oh, that's, I'm really pleased with that. I didn't spend long on it, but goodness, it looks great. I think people would uh, would pay quite a bit of money for that. So that's the problem with pricing by your time is that when it comes to artwork, it's very hard to quantify and um, it's very hard to see the results of, uh, of how much time you've put into something. Now, with all pricing formulas, you're going to find that if you're a craftsperson rather than a fine artist, in other words, if you're perhaps a jeweler or a potter, you may find it's a little bit easier to quantify your time and to quantify the results. So these sort of pricing formulas, um, the time pricing formulas might work for you if you're a crafter. Or if you're just starting out as a fine artist, it might be a place for you to at least begin is to, uh, is to price by your time. But long term, it's a very difficult thing to make work. And I, I don't know, I've probably got this wrong, but it may be Picasso, one of the uh, one of the fine artists basically said that, uh, you know, somebody complained that his work was very expensive, for the amount of lines on the page. And he sort of said, well, if I could do it in half the time with half the lines, I'd, try, I'd charge you twice as much. So it's kind of an experience thing, isn't it? And long term, the uh, the ability of an artist doesn't always have that much to do with how much time they spent making the artwork. So pricing formula number two is to go by size. This is often used by people like oil painters, people that work on canvases, and they often do it per square inch. 
So it's quite a simple calculation. What you do is you assign an amount to a square inch or you know whatever the measurement is per five centimeters if you're European like me. Um, so you assign a uh, you know an amount, a dollar, five dollars to a square inch, and then you simply times it by you know the size of your painting. And this in effect means that the bigger the piece of work, and assumingly the, you know the longer you spent on it the more money you charge for it. Now, where this pricing formula falls down long term is that there is no correlation whatsoever between the size of artwork and the price of an artwork. Now, by the time you watch this video, what I'm about to tell you may not be um, completely up to date, but the most expensive painting uh, to be sold at auction at the time of me making this video is the Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci. So it was the lost piece of artwork that came back and it's sold for many, many millions, and it's very, very small. I haven't personally been to see the Mona Lisa, but I'm told by people that have been to see it, and I will get to see it one day when I'm a rich YouTube millionaire. Don't think that's gonna happen, but I'll get to see it one day anyway. I'm told by people that if you look at the Mona Lisa, the thing that strikes you the most, having looked at images of it, you know, and photos of it your whole life, the thing that strikes you the most is how tiny it is. So. Artwork size has no long-term correlation to the uh, to the price that it's worth. So you know, again, this may help you in the short term, or perhaps if you're a crafter and your materials are quite expensive, if you're a potter or you make mosaics or something like that, you may find that uh, that pricing by uh, by size helps you. But long term, it doesn't have any bearing on the value of artwork. Now the third formula I have for you is to price by materials. Now the way this one works is that basically you work out the uh, the cost of the you know the physical materials that go into your work. So uh, you know the paper, the paint, the uh, the pottery, the ceramics, whatever it is that you're using, the jewelry pieces, the beads, whatever it is that you're using, you work that out, and then you perhaps use a percentage increaser to uh, to come up with a uh, a final value for your piece of artwork. Now, the reason that this doesn't work is, again, the, uh, you know, the materials that are taken to make a piece of art, and we see this particularly with modern art, the materials that are used have no bearing on the final value of a piece of fine art. So the, uh, the thing I always think of is Tracy Emin and her very controversial work, My Bed. I don't know how well this is known um, worldwide. I think it's very, very famous, certainly in the UK. It was a hugely controversial thing. And she basically made a piece of artwork out of a bed that she personally had slept in when she was going through some kind of um, mental breakdown and uh, manic depressive um, episode. And the bed itself has cigarette butts on and worn underwear and it's pretty disgusting and filthy. So why is Tracy Emin's bed worth several million pounds and my bed, which is nice and clean with lovely sheets from Ikea, worth pretty much nothing? And the reason is that the materials that go into a piece of fine art don't have any correlation with the final value. Now you may find as a crafter, particularly if your materials are quite expensive, this is something that you could consider is using this pricing formula, but even so it can be difficult. Now I was running an art show this summer and um, there was a lady in there who was a potter and she was a new potter and um, she had these beautiful ceramics, these bowls and jugs, and they were selling like hotcakes, but they were very, very cheap. And um, I, I called her aside one day and I said, uh, I said, how can you sell them so cheaply? You know, I can't imagine with the, you know, the, the cost of using the kiln and all the materials, you know, they're about sort of 10, 20 pounds each. You know, you can't be making any profit on this. And she said, to be honest, she said, I'm not, but I don't, you know, I'm new to selling. I don't know what to do. They're really popular. People love them and they just won't pay more for them. You know, if I worked out the cost of the kiln and running all of those things, it would be incredibly expensive and people just wouldn't pay the price. So I had a think about this lady's problem. I thought, well, what could we do about this? Because um, people won't pay more and um, she's already worked out that you know, the price would be so expensive if she made these bowls and fired them in the kiln that people just wouldn't, uh, wouldn't buy them any longer. So I said to her, I said, you must have a lot of small spaces in that kiln. And she said, well, I do. I said, have you ever considered making little pendants? Because jewelry always sells well at craft fairs and you can put a huge markup on something tiny like a pendant. So I said to her, you know, at supermarkets, what they often do is they have kind of loss leaders. So what I said to her is that you don't have to charge the same amount. You know, you don't have to be earning the same amount of profit on everything that you make. It could be that on the bowls, you make a very small profit or just break even. 
but on the pendants or on the smaller items you might make you know 200 300 percent profit so this is what you have to consider that it isn't always as easy or as simple as just increasing all of your um, all of your prices by sort of materials plus 80 percent plus 100 percent plus 10 percent whatever your formula is it's not always that easy and particularly if your materials are quite expensive then you're going to find that it may not actually work it may not correlate with market value and um, that's one of the uh, one of the main things that's, uh, that's an indicator of price particularly in crafts now if you're a fine artist it's a little bit different and if you're making paintings they can be worth you know hundreds thousands of pounds when they really are sort of um, you know the materials in them are really quite cheap one of my own paintings for instance you know the actual cost of the materials is very low people aren't paying for the materials they're paying for my skill and for the time that I put in so um, that's why these uh, these pricing formulas sometimes fall down and that's why the uh, the pricing formula of using materials sometimes fall down as I said you may find that if you're a crafter and you work very consistently and you have a consistent sort of cost and consistent sizes you may be able to use some of these pricing formulas but at the end of the day eventually you're going to find that they probably all fall down for you at the beginning of this video I promised to tell you the only two factors that actually influence the price which you can sell your artwork at now before I do that I want to say that I'm going to do a series of pricing videos because pricing artwork is far more than just um, just formulas as I've said they you know they're problematic they always fall down in the end so I'm going to do a series of pricing videos so that you can really really approach this subject with some confidence because at the end of the day you don't want to be worrying about what the price um, you're selling your artwork at you want to be concentrating on becoming a better painter so now what are the only two factors that influence the price you can sell your artwork at the first factor is market value which is very simply the price which people are prepared to pay for your type of artwork in the area in which you are selling that artwork so whether that's locally or whether that's worldwide it's the price that people are generally prepared to pay for that type of artwork and the second uh, the second factor when it comes to pricing and this is by far the most important is the perceived value of the artist as I said I'm going to do another video on this and um, it's a very very complex subject but when you buy a piece of artwork you're really really buying the artist this is the reason why Tracy Emin's skanky old bed is worth a lot more, more than my clean um, and tidy bed and that's because people aren't buying the bed itself they're not buying that horrible old bed with a load of rubbish strewn across it they are buying Tracy Emin's social commentary she has uh, a reputation and um, in, within the industry for being a fantastic social commentator whether you like her whether you hate her it's of no consequence some people are prepared to pay for that uh, that insightful social commentary and that's why her work is worth what it is so the value of the artist themselves is the number one factor in pricing artwork this can be difficult if you're a brand new artist and um, you don't have a reputation or any selling history so as I said do subscribe to the channel because I'm going to do lots more videos on pricing coming up and if, particularly if you're a new artist it's going to help you to really approach pricing with confidence so let me know in the comments if you have had any issues with pricing your own work or perhaps you are perhaps you haven't started selling yet but you're just getting ready to do that now if you enjoyed this video please do click the like button and share and uh, you'll probably enjoy the video I made about the things that amateur artists do that professionals never would. You can watch that video right now.